Welcome to Bible Logos. I'm Deborah Phipps, your broadcast host, and I'm here today to bring you part two of the message, Mine, Yours, and Ours. Please remember to like and share this message on social media with your family and friends. All right, here we go with part two of Mine, Yours, and Ours. That's dysfunction, isn't it? But do you know some marriages look like that? In the, it, even in some marriages, this is my money, that's your money. These are my bills, those are your bills. He meddling in. According to the Jamaica Observer and contributing counseling psychologist, Dr. Andre Allen Casey, the saying, what's yours is mine and what's mine is yours generally holds true in relationships until it comes to the issue of money. As some individuals feel it never hurts to have a secret stash for when the bumper hits the road. Sometimes couples are able to hide their secret bank accounts debts, and expensive purchases from each other for years. But when the secret comes to light, the hurt it creates is akin to the feelings experienced upon learning that a wife or a husband has a secret love child. Some experts even go as far as to argue that this form of cloak and dagger dealings is just as bad as cheating with another person and have described the act as financial infidelity. Amen. Let me see them applauses again. <laughs> There's a third category, which goes even a step further, where some say, what's, and this is seen in marriages also, What's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. <laughs> I'm taking all of mine and yours. And you know, as enjoyable and titillating as this is to the ears, it's still dysfunctional. And it's damaging and undermining and erosion causing to the relationship. God's plan for us is to be interconnected. God's plan is for us to be interdependent. God's will for us is to experience life together. And marriages should be the model for that way of operation should be mother said should be <laughs> because no man or woman is an island it's not about me it's not about you we are all a part of a body we are all connected together we have to function if we do things God's way, as a body would function. You laughed a few minutes ago when I said, what if the shoulder or the kneecap decided to go to stay at home or to go to the beach today when the rest of the body decided to come in? You, you laughed at that because it's ridiculous. And so if we can see how ridiculous that is with our physical bodies, we need to also see how ridiculous it is with his spiritual body because we are the body of Christ. Come on and put your hands together. Thank God. God wants us to function as a body the same way the limbs of your body function cohesively and together as a unit. Rick Warren says in the book, he says, real fellowship is so much more than just showing up at services. 
is experiencing life together. It is experiencing life together. He goes on to say, it includes unselfish loving, honest sharing, practical serving, sacrificial giving, sympathetic comforting, and all the other one another commands that are found in the New Testament. God's plan is for us to be interconnected. God's will is for us to be interdependent. God's design is for us to experience life together. And what we find in the passage of scripture that we're reading from, that we're taking from as our text over in Acts chapter 2, is that this is what we are seeing demonstrated when he formed his church. One way that we see that the people of God were experiencing life together is the fact that the scripture lets us know that they who believed were all together. Verse 44 says, and all who believed were together. Welcome back. If you liked what you heard so far, tune in tomorrow for part three of the message, mine, yours, and ours. Please remember to like and share this message with your friends and family. I'm Deborah Phipps, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore it is the same measure that you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.